Hello and welcome to another one of my math videos. This cutie over here is Mr. Squirrel. My name is Mr. Brash and I'm here to talk to you about solving quadratics that don't factor and this is part two. So I've got another video part one if you want to check that out first. Definitely need to make sure you know how to factor. You've seen completing the square before and even the quadratic formula before you watch this video. And I have various videos for that. Khan Academy has various videos for that. And away we go. At this point, you've learned tons and tons of different methods for solving quadratics and you've seen how they draw. They draw like a parabola. You've seen factoring, you've seen completing the square, all of those things. So just a real quick rundown of what we're doing when we solve. What we're doing is we're looking for an x that gives us the answer. For instance, zero in the most cases, we're looking for the zeros. Here I have on the left hand side two factoring uh, equations or examples and on the right hand side I've got a completing the square example. And then down here is the lovely quadratic formula. Now all of these are the different ways that you can solve for the zeros or solve for the roots. One thing that I want to show you, however, is that they all have something in common. So the, all of those methods that I just showed you, they're all looking for the zeros and the zeros are equidistant from the vertex. And that's huge. Equidistant just means same distance. And if I have the vertex of a particular parabola, and we call that the axis of symmetry that goes down that center line for that parabola, all of the things that we are doing, all of those equations, which I'll go back to in a second, are discovering that distance from the axis of symmetry between the zeros and the vertex or some other point which we lovingly call the roots. So if I was looking for an example here at negative five, this is a y value of negative five, I would be looking for this spot here and this spot here, which are also equidistant from that vertex. Let's take a look at those equations again. When we're factoring, we are looking for something on the left and something on the right of the vertex. We end up with two different values. I'm gonna talk in just a minute as to how those are actually equidistant from the vertex. Completing the square is where it really starts to show us that that's exactly what we're doing because when we have it in vertex form, so this line right here is where it's first in vertex form without the, the A value. I know that the x value of my vertex here is seven, and when I take the square root of both sides, I end up with this plus and minus. And that's the key, that's the huge part, is that we're gonna add some certain value to and from the vertex. In this case here, my vertex, or the x value of my vertex, would be seven or negative seven, once we get it to the other side of the equal sign. So we would have x equals negative seven, plus or minus that value. And that is where you see that we end up with the x value of the vertex, which is negative seven. And we are gonna add and subtract the same value so that it ends up on both sides. This right here is, is the magic. When we take a look at the quadratic formula, we see it again directly in the quadratic formula with the plus and minus there. Basically what that does is it finds the vertex, finds the vertex, and it adds and subtracts, adds and subtracts some value to and from that vertex. So if we really take a look at that quadratic formula, and I mean really examine it, what it actually is, because it's a common denominator, right? We've got negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and it is also over to a. What that means is that negative b over 2a is the vertex, or at least is the x value of the vertex. So this right here, that negative b over 2a, that's the x value of the vertex. I want you to remember that for the rest of this video when I get to something else. The rest of it is the added stuff for the addition and subtraction to find those two zeros points. So I might call this the two remainders. Uh, if we call the, the distance that's missing, the two remainders or the unknowns, as I'm gonna talk about that in just a second because we're gonna use the letter U for unknowns. Taking a look now at the factored form, how does that relate? How is that linked? 
it comes from this negative b over 2a, which happens to be the x value of the vertex. If I take a look at the first equation here, 12x plus 20, I know there's an x there, but or x squared rather. If I take a look at that 12x, I do negative b over 2a, but in this case, the a is just a one, so I'll, I'll just, you know, it's really just dividing by two. That's negative 12 divided by two. Negative 12 divided by two is negative six. Let's just take a look at what we did there. Negative six is my x value of the vertex for this equation, this scenario. My solutions or my zeros are apparently negative 10 and negative two. Well, negative six is directly between those two values. If I go four to the left, I get negative 10. And if I go four to the right, if we kind of consider this a number line, I get negative two. I can see my vertex and I can see my two zeros, which are equidistant. Let's take a look at the next factored form scenario. Again, I'll take my negative b over 2a. So negative b, so negative, negative eight over 2a. Well, the a is a one, so just over two. Positive eight divided by two, which is four. So that's positive four. So that's the x value of my vertex. And I just noticed a big typo there. I'm just gonna fix that real quick. All right, so my zeros are actually negative three and positive 11, contrary to what I had there. Uh, let's take a look here. I've got a zero at negative three. I've got a zero at 11, and I think the x value of my vertex is four. Well, if I go to the left, or at least subtract seven, so if I subtract seven, and if I add seven, I get my two zeros from my vertex. So this entire time, that's what we've been doing. We've been taking a look at what is the distance between the vertex and the zeros. The quadratic formula is really lovely to take care of that for us and finds the zeros for us uh, pretty much every time. You can use it all the time if you want to, although factoring is pretty quick. But recently, a little trick or a new way of doing it has come to light and is uh, starting to get some traction on the internet. That new form or that new way of doing it has been shown off a lot by someone called Po Shen Lo. He's a mathematician and he's got a lot of stuff on this website right here about it and you should definitely take a look at it. Essentially what he's doing is he's connecting the relationship between standard form, factored form, and vertex form using a different kind of trick called the PQ formula. It also, it goes by a couple of different names. But what he's doing is he's taking the PQ formula and he's making it a little bit easier to use. If you wanna look up the PQ formula, you can. Essentially though, it's just as simple as what I showed you up ahead at the top there in my previous examples. He is going to take the x value of the vertex, that negative b over two, as I showed you before, and he's going to add and subtract some unknown value. So this is the x value of the vertex. Both of those arrows that I have there are the x values of the vertex. What he is going to do is he's going to add and subtract, add and subtract, some unknown value. Now he decided to use the letter u because it's an unknown value. What he then did was he figured out how to find that unknown value really, really easily. So I would like to show you that now. I also have a ton of links on my website as to you know his videos and sort of his demonstrations. So first and foremost, let's just go back a second and recall that we remember how to multiply situations like this. This ends up being what we call a difference of squares. And once we multiply this out, we're gonna do five times five, which is 25. We're gonna do five times negative Z, so negative five Z. We're gonna do Z times five, which is going to be positive five Z, and we'll do the Z times the Z, which gives us Z squared. Some people know this as FOIL, just multiplying it out, multiplying polynomials, expanding and simplifying, whatever. The important part here though, is that the five Z's are going to cancel, and I end up with 25 minus z squared. So you really need to know how to do that and do that expansion in order to uh, complete what I'm going to be showing you. And there is a trick. It's just square the first, square the last, and it's a subtraction in the middle. That only works though when you have this pattern. So just make sure you know how to do that before I continue. Let's take a look at an example and solve this quadratic using Poshenlo's sort of format, which comes again from the PQ formula. 
The first thing we're going to do in order to solve for the zeros, we're going to make it equal to zeros. So this is zero equals three x squared minus 42 x plus 72. Now this format that I'm going to be showing you only works when your a value is one. So we're going to factor out our a value. We want an a value, a value of one. That's what we want. So I'll factor a three out. And the beautiful thing is here that if it's equal to zero, we can just divide that three on both sides and the three just disappears. I'll show it in two steps. We'll factor out the three. So we get x squared minus 42 divided by three. That's 14 and 72 divided by three, which is 24. Now that I have three times all of this, I can just divide both sides by three and it disappears. And I end up with a quadratic that represents the same thing just without the three. Sometimes when you do that, you'll end up with fractions. I decided to do one here without the fractions. What we're going to do now is we're going to find that X value of our vertex. So the X value of our vertex, X value of the vertex is negative B over two A. So that's x equals negative b over 2a. Well, in this case, it's really just negative b over 2 because the a is gone. So my negative b is negative 14, negative, negative 14, actually. That becomes a positive 14 divided by 2, which is 7. And that's a really important number. When you remember about factoring, product and sum was this idea of finding two numbers that multiply to 24, which is our product, and sum to 14. This is where the 24 comes into play. It's really, really important that we remember that product and that sum. What we think is, we think that 24 came from the multiplication of two values. That's this idea of a product, right? The multiplication of two values. Well, those two values are equidistant from the vertex. It just so happens that they are seven, which is the X value of our vertex, plus some unknown value, and seven minus some unknown value. This is the really cool part. The sum of seven and seven is 14, but it's not always seven. If you remember our factoring, it could be, you know, uh, I don't know, eight and six or something like this. So we're gonna find some value that we can add and subtract from seven that still adds to 14, and multiplies to 24. So we're applying the quadratic formula, we're applying completing the square, and we're applying factoring right now all in one shot. And that's kind of the neat trick of this new tool. We're going to expand this, which as I showed above is just now a difference of squares. And we're gonna solve for u. Let me subtract 49 on both sides. When we do that, we get 25, or very specifically, negative 25. Negative 25 is equal to negative u, so that means that positive 25 is equal to positive u squared. We're gonna take the square root of both sides and we get five. Now technically we get positive or negative five, but I'll show you in a second why we don't really need that. So I'm positing or I'm suggesting or I'm saying that the solutions to this quadratic are seven plus five and seven minus five. What I'm saying is, I'm saying that the zeros or the solutions are seven minus five, which equals two, and seven plus five, which equals 12. We can triple check that this works by seeing if they add and subtract to our requisite value. Two times 12 is definitely 24. And if I were to combine these, two plus 12 is 14. Now what you're going to say is, okay, it didn't work, it doesn't factor. Well, these are the actual zeros, two and 12. If I were to write this out in factored form, what I would write is x minus two and x minus 12. And so in that case, it worked perfectly because I'll get my negative 14 when I multiply this out and I'll still get positive 24 when I multiply this out. I went straight to the zeros, not to factored form. So my two zeros are two and 12. Now this is a totally new and different way for a lot of you and, and I tried to color code it and sort of show how this worked. We're gonna do another example of it and this time we're going to get it so it doesn't actually factor and it'll be a decimal value. 
We've been asked to solve this equation. So again, we're going to put zero equals because we're solving for the zeros. There's no a value, so we're not gonna have to worry about dividing by an a value. I really just wanna focus on this new format or this new way of doing it. We'll find that negative b over two, which kinda is known as the average, and it's kind of a weird way of saying it, but uh, it's the average between the zeros, which is the vertex. Okay, so we get negative eight over two, which is negative four. I think that there is some value where I can say negative four plus some value and negative four minus some value, and that's going to equal negative 10. That's going to equal negative 10. So I'm going to do this product and sum stuff on a quadratic that doesn't factor, but I'm sort of pretending to factor it. This would be the product, and they're going to sum to eight when I'm done. We'll expand this out, so I'm going to get negative four times negative four is positive 16, and then I'll get my negative u squared. I'll subtract 16 on both sides to get negative 26. And so you can see here, we're going to get a square root that's really kind of not so fun. So uh, you don't really have to write this line, but I'll just write out the positive version of it, so divide both sides by negative one. We take the square root of both sides, so I end up with uh, u equaling 5.099. I'll just round to something like 5.099. Again, you would say that, well, when you take the square root of value, you should get a positive or a negative. Well, I'm going to show you why I don't need to worry about the positive or, ne or the negative. In the previous one, in, in this color here, I ended up with the square root of 25, and I got 5. If I were to say that it's positive or negative 5, then that would mean I'd have to do the answers four times. So I would have to do seven minus five, and I would have to do seven minus negative five. Well, seven minus negative five is 12. I already have that answer. Okay, and then you do seven plus five, okay, and then seven plus negative five. Well, seven plus negative five is two, and I already have that answer. So you could, if you wanted to, do the positive or negative five part of it, but you're going to end up wasting your time because you'll have the same answers twice. And so you don't need to worry about that. It takes care of it itself. Okay, so I've got my u. What I am proposing is that my zeros for this particular scenario is negative four plus u, negative four plus 5.099, which is 1.099 and negative four minus 5.099, which is negative 9.099, and those are the two zeros. It obviously wasn't factorable, but if I go ahead and I plot this, I use Desmos or something like that to plot this, uh, this equation, I'll end up with these two values as my zeros. I didn't have to use the quadratic formula. I didn't have to complete the square on it. I have them, no problem. I also know what the vertex is. The y value of, or sorry, rather the x value of the vertex is negative four. I already know that. So this over here, that's the x value of the vertex. And if I wanted the y value of the vertex, I would just plug it in. Plug negative four into this equation, you'll get the y value of your vertex. If you would like to see more examples of this method, Po Shen Lo has tons in his YouTube video, and he goes over sort of in a slower version. His video is about 40 minutes long, and it, uh, he uh, also talks about simplifying the radicals and writing it as a decimal instead. I think he talks about fractions a little bit more. I don't, I don't tend to worry about the fractions when I'm doing it uh, this way. Uh, just don't want to confuse people uh, with adding in the fractions. So definitely you're gonna to want to take a look at practicing this. Find some quadratics where that you already have the solutions to that you can look up later or something like that. Practice this method to find the solutions or find the roots. Take a look at Po Shen Lo's video. It's actually pretty good. It's just long. And again, you can't get through this kind of stuff without practicing it. My name is Mr. Brash. This cute guy over here is Mr. Squirrel and he approves my video. This was solving quadratics that don't factor part two. I'll leave a link to Potion Lowe's videos and uh, check the description of this video for different timestamps and, and the accompanying document and that sort of thing. If you appreciated this, give me a little thumbs up. If you wanna leave a comment, go for it. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, hey, go ahead, I'd really appreciate that. Take care and keep practicing math.